In this video, we're going to take a look at the different types of lights available within UDK. Now, what I'm going to do first is open up the content browser and switch over to Actor Classes. And here, underneath the light actor, you're going to notice a few different types of lights. We have five, actually. We have directional light, point light, skylight, spotlight, and UT pickup light. Now, UT pickup light is highly specialized. It's really only there for specific circumstances within the game Unreal Tournament, so we're going to disregard that in this particular case. Now, that only leaves four. A skylight is an interesting case. What a skylight is, is it's like an infinite sphere or hemisphere of light that is there to simulate ambient light being bounced around your scene. It's a legacy light. It was here before light mass. See, now, nowadays, light mass actually handles calculations of bounced light, and so the skylight itself is obsolete and should generally be avoided, especially if you're making use of light mass in your levels. Now that only leaves three. We have the point light, the spotlight, and the directional light, and I have one of each set up here inside this level to demonstrate for you. So let's start off with the point light. Now this is pretty easy to understand. Really all this is is a single point in space that is emitting light in all directions. The extent of the light is controlled by a spherical radius. Now if we open up its properties, expand light, light component, we can expand the point light component and get these specific properties just for the light itself. Now, as we increase the radius, you'll see that that area of effect goes up and down. Pretty easy to understand. You can also control the fall-off exponent, which is how quickly the light is going to decay from the actual start point to the edge of that radius. So if we set that to zero, we get no decay, and we have a razor-sharp sphere. We can go ahead and push that up to one, and now we have linear, de linear decay, excuse me, and we'll push that back up to two. Now, there are three separate shadow properties here, and without going into too much detail, what these do is these allow you to control modulated shadows. Modulated shadows attenuate by default, meaning that if you were standing, say, in this level, and you looked down at your shadow, say you had you know, a shadow that was kind of pointing off at, uh, at you know, like three o'clock, that shadow would be darker toward your feet than it would be as it gets up to the shadow of your head. It would just kind of have a, a fade off. And these properties allow you to control that. So you have the fall off radius, which controls where that fall off is going to begin, the fall off exponent, which is how quickly that's going to happen, and then a multiplier value to affect that. Now down from here, we have the translation of the light. Generally, I don't use this that often, but uh, well, really, because if I want to move a light, I can just move the light. But what this allows you to do is to move the actual light location away from the pivot point of the actor itself. So if we take the Z and set it up to, I don't know, let's try 128. You'll notice the light actually moved up, but the actor is still in the same location. So it's a nice way to quickly punch in an exact offset if you need to, like a, a relative distance. Okay, so that's a point light. Pretty easy. Now let's come over to a spotlight. As the name suggests, this is going to allow you to use a cone of light as opposed to something that emits in all directions. And if we take a look at its properties, it still has the point light component, the same stuff that we were using over on the point light. But in addition, it also has the spotlight component, which has two properties, inner cone angle and outer cone angle. Now to show these off, I'm going to take the inner cone angle and set it down to, say, 29, just one unit below. And notice that I now have a little bit of softening right around the edge of our light. To really make it clear, let's go from 29 down to about 20. And what you're seeing here is that within the inner cone angle, you're getting 100% intensity of the light. As you move from the edge of the inner cone angle to the edge of the outer cone angle, the light is falling off and eventually going to black, and outside the outer cone angle, you get no light. So it's a way you can control not only how big the cone of the light is, but how it softens as it gets to the outer edge. If you want a soft light, you want a nice difference between your inner and outer cone angle. If you want a sharper light, then you don't want much of a dis uh, difference. Now, generally, having the two values the same would be considered highly unrealistic. You're not often going to see that unless you've got some sort of a mask in front of the light. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Also be aware that if it is static lighting, that creating a razor sharp uh, light like this would require that you have a really high resolution light map. And you'd have to build to some pretty high settings to be able to see that. Just food for thought. For this reason, if for no, no other than the fact that it does look better, 
it's generally a good idea to have some softening. So that's a quick look at spotlights. There's really not much to them. I mean, if you have if you can grab a, uh, a point light and understand how that works, a spotlight's just kind of a portion of a point light with some cone control. Now up here in the air, I've got a directional light. Now directional light simulates light coming from an infinitely distant location from an infinitely large plane. What that means is uh, all of the light rays are parallel. If you've ever taken like a flashlight, and you shine it at the wall and put your hand in front of it. You ever notice how your shadow gets really big as you get close uh, to the light source and then kind of smaller as you move away? That's because that light is going out in a cone-like shape. And that's the kind of behavior you'd actually see if you used the spotlight in UDK. However, if you go outside and uh, stand beneath the direct sunlight, if you hold your hand out and take a look at it on the ground, your hand's shadow is going to be roughly the same size as it is in the air as when you put your hand right over the ground. And that's, just, that's because all of those light rays are almost parallel, because the sun is very, very large, and it's very, very far away. Because of that, directional lights are perfect for simulating the sun. They do have one slight difference. We were talking about the light mass properties for point lights, and you might have noticed uh, that we had the light source radius. This controls shadow softening. The larger your radius, the softer your shadows are going to be. If you have a radius of zero, you get razor sharp shadows. If you go to a spotlight, you get the exact same thing. However, on a directional light, the property is called light source angle because radius is irrelevant when all of your light rays are parallel. So as you start to increase this radius, your shadows will get softer. That's really all there is to it. And you can play with that and get a lot of different types of shadowing effects. Now, a couple of things about using directional light. One, their position is completely irrelevant. Generally, when I'm using one, I will stick it up in the air because I consider it to be a light coming from the sun. And just mentally, I always expect to find those up in the air somewhere. But where you move it doesn't matter because, again, it's an infinitely large plane that's infinitely far away. However, if you rotate it, the light will change. So if we look down here, you see our shadows updating along with the rotation. Now, something else, too, because now that you know how to make something that's kind of like a sunlight, your next move is probably going to be to create something like what we see here with the sky. But I thought you should be aware of something. Let me delete out this sky, and let's create a brand new one. So I'm going to go into the content browser, and here's S U N Sky S M Sky Dome 5 All I did was search through all assets for static meshes and type in sky. You'll find this real easy. Now I'm going to drag this into the middle of our level, and as soon as I let go of the mouse, it looks like everything goes black. Now, part of that is that we need to rebuild our lighting, which I could do. Let me switch over to preview mode and click build all. But see, the problem here is that we've set up a gigantic static mesh dome. And this light dome, you can consider as being a huge, huge dome. It's just, it goes you know further than anybody's ever built a dome ever, even the Superdome. And it's got a really nice painting of a sky on the underside of it. The problem is it's a slave to lighting. That directional light that we put in earlier is shining light from infinitely far away, and it's just striking the outside of the dome. So now we're kind of buried in shadow, and we can't really see what's going on anymore. Now, let's see, swarm is done. It's wrapping everything up. Let's hit close. And we can see this. We can see the effect of our lights, but we're not getting any of the result of our directional light. It's not doing anything for us. The reason is it's being blocked. So what we're going to do is open up the properties for our skylight. And we'll come under Static Mesh Actor, Expand Static Mesh Component, go under Lighting, Switch Off Accept Dynamic Lights, Switch Off Accept Lights, and Switch Off Cast Shadow. And don't rotate the sky dome like I just did because it'll make you feel really disoriented. All right, so that is a quick look at how to set up a sky dome. Now, again, you still see some lighting in here. This is not coming from the directional light. This is actually coming from light mass bouncing around the light of our point light and our spotlight. So just be aware of that. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. Again, it's just a way to go over the different types of lights that you have available to you. And I will catch you in the next video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.